you're looking at a square. And I hope you'll agree that we connect two opposite corners, that's called a diagonal. And in a square, if it was on paper and we folded along the dotted line, the diagonal, both sides would coincide with one another and would also work for the other diagonal. And would also work if we connected the midpoints of the two vertical sides and then folded, and also the midpoints of the two horizontal sides and then folded along that dotted line. These four dotted lines are all called lines of symmetry with respect to this square. A square has four lines of symmetry. Now let's look at a rectangle. There's one line of symmetry. We all know we can fold a rectangle like that. There's a second line of symmetry. But many people think that in a rectangle, the diagonals are also lines of symmetry. But I'll show you what happens when you fold this rectangle. The two halves do not coincide with one another. So a rectangle, which is not also a square, just has two lines of symmetry. Let's look at an equilateral triangle. There's one, two, and three. Let's look at a regular pentagon. One, two, three, four, and five. And now a regular hexagon. One, two, three, four, five, six. Not every pentagon or hexagon has lines of symmetry, but the ones that are regular, meaning that all sides are the same and all angles are the same, have the lines of symmetry just shown. Let's compare those four shapes. Equilateral triangle, square, regular pentagon, regular hexagon. Notice the two with odd numbered sides, the pentagon and the triangle, the lines of symmetry go from a vertex to the opposite midpoint. And in a square and a hexagon, the lines of symmetry go from opposite vertices and opposite midpoints. Here's an isosceles triangle. It just has one line of symmetry. Here's a scalene triangle, and that means that all three sides have different lengths. There are no lines of symmetry in a scalene triangle. Here's a pentagon shaped like home plate in baseball or softball. It has just one line of symmetry. It's not the same as a regular pentagon because all sides are not the same length and all angles are not the same measure. But it does have one line of symmetry as shown. Let's take a look at the letters of the alphabet displayed as capital letters in the font Arial. You might want to stop the video and take a look for lines of horizontal and vertical symmetry. That's what I've tried to find and after you have stopped it and tried it on your own, you can turn it back on and see if you agree with me. Well, here are my lines. I believe the A has a vertical line of symmetry. The B has none, although that's because I think the top part of the B is a little smaller than the bottom part. But the letter B could be modified in sort of a special custom font so that it would have a horizontal line of symmetry. The C, the D, and the E all have horizontal lines of symmetry. The F and the G do not have horizontal or vertical. The H is a letter with both a horizontal line of symmetry and a vertical line of symmetry along with the I. The J and the K have no vertical or horizontal lines of symmetry, but I think we could make a special custom K that could be made to have a horizontal line of symmetry. The L has none. The M has a vertical line of symmetry. The N has none. The O has both a horizontal and a vertical line of symmetry, and in a font where the O is perfectly round, it has infinite lines of symmetry in all directions, not just horizontal or vertical. But in many fonts, the O is an oval, and then it just has a horizontal and a vertical line of symmetry. The P has no lines of symmetry. This Q has none, but I'm sure you could make a custom Q that probably had one line of symmetry if you made the Q in a special way. The R has none, the S has none, the T has a vertical line, the U a vertical line, the V and the W. All four of those consecutive letters have vertical lines of symmetry. Then the X is one of those letters with two lines of symmetry, the Y has a vertical line, and the Z has no lines of symmetry. Now let's take a look at another type of symmetry called rotational symmetry. 
If we take a square and rotate it around the center of the square, which is what we're about to do, I'm going to mark the corner A so that when I rotate it, you'll see where the A ends up. And after a 90 degree turn, the square coincides with itself. So it has rotational symmetry. We'll do it one more 90 degree turn, and you can see we could keep doing that with a square every 90 degrees. It coincides with itself. A square has rotational symmetry around a point in the center of the square. Here's an equilateral triangle, and we rotate it, and after a 60 degree rotation, it coincides with itself, and we could keep doing that. It would coincide with itself again after 120 degrees, and then when it gets back on a complete 360 degree rotation. Well, here's an isosceles triangle. We can rotate that, but it will not coincide with itself until it's gone all the way around 360 degrees. So the isosceles triangle does not have rotational symmetry. The definition of rotational symmetry is an object has rotational symmetry around a point if it can be rotated between 0 and 360 degrees and coincide with itself. Every object can be rotated 360 degrees so that it coincides with itself. So it must be a rotation less than that in order to have rotational symmetry. Let's look at playing cards. If we just look at the playing card as a rectangle with rounded off corners, we know that it has line symmetry for both a vertical line and a horizontal line. But if we look at the card and try to fold it so that the printed part of the card overlaps, it won't work. You'll see the three of diamonds at the top, if folded horizontally, won't line up with the three of diamonds at the bottom, and the same if they're folded vertically. So this playing card does not have any lines of symmetry if we're concerned about what's printed on the card. If it was a blank card, it would have two lines of symmetry. But a card may have rotational symmetry, and this one does. But now let's look at the three of hearts. The one on the left has been rotated 180 degrees to get the one on the right, and they look pretty similar, but if you look at the hearts in the middle, they're not the same. So the three of diamonds did have rotational symmetry, but the three of hearts did not. Let's take a look at six cards. You'll have to trust me. I'm going to start with the queen of spades, and you're going to have to trust me that I've rotated it. They look the same. I believe the queen of spades has rotational symmetry around the center. So does the jack of spades. But take a look at this joker. When it gets rotated, the joker is upside down in the image. And here's the king. I believe that has rotational symmetry. Same with the jack of diamonds. But once again, when we do the five of spades, look at those two spades in the center. They don't coincide, so the five of spades does not have rotational symmetry. If a line can be drawn on a figure so that the figure can be folded on that line to make each half of the figure coincide with the other half of the figure, then the figure is said to have reflection or line symmetry, and the line is a line of reflection. If a figure can be rotated around a point between 0 and 360 degrees so that the rotated figure coincides with the original figure, the figure is said to have rotational symmetry.